fun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire Line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, new for 2021, standing at Gainesway. Five weeks out from the Kentucky Derby, three point scoring races on tap this weekend. Jay Privman along with Marty McGee as we continue down the road to the Kentucky Derby. Marty, you're in South Florida where the big race of the week is the Florida Derby. It's the highlight of the Gulfstream Park season and three horses who are in our Derby Watch Top 20 are in this race. But let's take them one at a time, starting with the acknowledged favorite for this race, and that's greatest honor. He's won his last couple of starts there at Gulfstream and stakes races, including most recently the Fountain of Youth. What are your expectations for him on Saturday? Well, Jay, uh, Pete Aiello, who makes the line here at Gulfstream and also is the race caller, made him six to five on the line. I think he'll probably be even money or less, um, which is just kind of splitting hairs. But no doubt that he has been sensational, greatest honor, in winning both the Holy Bowl and the Fountain of Youth here. The Fountain of Youth, as we noted uh, post-race after it, um, was, was that it looked at about the three-eighths pole. This horse might get nothing. And then all of a sudden, he kicked on the Jets at about the quarter pole, and it was a short stretch run. But anyway, uh, he didn't even need the last 16th of a mile of the stretch run. He flew past, uh, drained the clock, and... Uh, it's just it's got orb written all over it. as we all know orb eight years ago won the kentucky derby for shug mcgahey so uh i'm sure that um Sh uh, would like to just have this horse in bubble wrap up until the race and on to the kentucky derby he's already in with enough points so uh he is the acknowledged favorite as you said and uh, definitely wanted to beat some of the horses behind him which we'll talk about some of them they've got some things to prove in this race well, uh, one thing that I think will help greatest honor also in this race, Marty, is that now he gets to go a mile and an eighth after a mile and a sixteenth in his two previous races. And as we've noted, uh, most especially with that Fountain of Youth, as you just referenced, it seems like he takes a little while to get going. But once he gets going, he gets going. And the extra distance of this race certainly should uh, suit him. It looks like one of the horses he's going to have to run down is the lightly raced collaborator. Here's a horse who's only had two starts, both in the month of February. He's coming off a maiden win in a one-turn mile. Now he goes into his first race against winners in a stake, the biggest stake of the season for his division at Gulfstream Park. Goes around two turns for the first time. What do you think of Collaborate in this race? Well, this is becoming a weekly thing, Jay, where I uh, congratulate you on a really finely uh, written piece. You, you've gone into detail in Friday's edition of the Daily Racing Forum on Collaborate and his trainer, Safi Joseph Jr. Um, but as you and I have mentioned a number of times on here, they all look great when they're winning by 12. <laughs> so, and that's just what he did in breaking his maiden or winning his maiden on February 27th, the Fountain of Youth undercard. A uh, huge test here, but uh, given the reputation the horse had before his maiden win and during it and after it, um, He's going to take quite a bit of support. I'm rather skeptical, uh, especially going the two turns for the first time, as you, as you mentioned. So um, I would not, uh, you know, going to the window, I probably wouldn't be using this horse too heavily. Very well. I, I, I think he's got a big chance. Uh, I thought he had a ton of trouble first time out. Maybe could have won. Might have been the better thing for him that he didn't, though, because he was able to run back against Maidens. He's certainly giving up a ton in terms of experience, but I think there's a lot of quality to this horse. I'm not saying he's, I, I like him for the Kentucky Derby, but I do think he's got a big chance this week in this specific race. Uh, and I think he will be a very prominent horse in here. So we'll see if he can step up uh, and overcome that inexperience. By contrast, Marty, a horse who's got a lot of experience is Spielberg, who has uh, raced a number of times mostly in California, but he went to Oakland last time and I thought turned in a, a, a better effort than uh, I'd expected from him. He's a horse I'd kind of given up on. I just thought he had reached a plateau. But his last race I thought was pretty well in the Southwest Stakes. Now he heads down to South Florida 
to take on greatest honor and collaborate among uh, the others in there. What are your expectations of Spielberg in the Florida Derby? Well, first of all, duly noted on you touting uh, collaborate here. But uh, as far as Spielberg, <laughs> you were kind of you were kind of down on him, it seemed like, and then he yes. jumped up and ran really, really well at Oakland Park. And this is this is way outside the box, non Pegasus style for Bob Baffert to send a horse here for a Kentucky Derby prep uh, or, or for a Gulfstream race. In, in any way, but uh, um, I, I don't know what to make of him. He, his race at Oakline was the one that kind of kicked or did kick uh, Jackie's Warrior off the list and, and to, into the shorter races, but uh, um, I don't know what to make of him. I think, the, the, I think the most overriding factor in Bob sending him here is that he needs to keep all of these many horses, even without Life is Good, separated in, in various races uh, heading into Louisville, so um, I, I don't, I, I would tend to not like him. The horse I like in here is Nova Rags, uh, from the rail. And, uh, I liked his races over at Tampa, even though he was not flattered whatsoever by his stable mate, uh, Candyman Rocket, who beat him in the Sam Davis coming back and running so poorly in the Tampa Bay Derby. Nonetheless, uh, I like the way that Bill might bided his time with this and he's going to give him a chance. And, uh, I think he's going to get a trip in here. I'm speaking of number one, Nova Rags one of the longer shots uh, against, uh, I think, Greatest Honor wins the race uh, from behind, and, and Nova Rags might be the one to beat the others. Duly noted on uh, Nova Rags, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's our look at the Florida Derby. As we mentioned, there's two other point-scoring races. But, Marty, it's kind of a strange situation. Both the UAE Derby and the Jeff Ruby Stakes don't have any horses on our current Derby Watch Top 20, but because of the big point values in both, 170 overall, 100 to, for first, 40 for second, whoever runs 1-2 in either of those races is going to have enough points to get into the field, and because of that, is probably going to have to go on our list. So there's nobody in there, though, who I'm really eager to see or I think is a top Derby contender. What about yourself? I mean, I mean... There might be four horses come out of these two races, the, the top two finishers who can make the Derby field. It usually doesn't happen that way with uh, the UAE Derby. We usually get one or none out of that. But this is the first time that Churchill Downs owned Turfway Park is having a 100 points to the winner value assigned to their major race. It used to be the Jim Beam and then the Gallery Furniture, and we can run down the list. And now it's the Jeff Ruby Stakes, S-T-E-A-K-S. And uh, I guess I like Tarantino in there. I mean, he comes out of some some pretty good races, and he's he's pretty fast. So I guess I would like him. But I will make this bold prediction right now, Jay, that the runner-up in the Jeff Ruby Stakes, if he runs in the Kentucky Derby, will be the longest shot in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> so let's hope this is a one-and-done thing because the synthetic aspect to this just kind of – it, it really doesn't apply to the Kentucky Derby. Nobody would really run, in my mind, a top horse in a race like this, and yet uh, it's a, it's the equivalent of, of a lot of the major preps, points-wise. Yes, it's, it's worth just as much as the Florida Derby, the Santa Anita Derby, the Bluegrass Stakes, the Arkansas Derby. Uh, it's one of the many hundred point-to-the-winner races that are going to be coming up over these next few weeks. Three of them on tap this weekend, most notably the Florida Derby. That's our preview of this weekend's action. Also here at DRF.com, you'll find a video recap of last week's race, the Louisiana Derby that we uh, took a long look at. Uh, and you'll find, of course, stories on all these big races and a feature story, as Marty mentioned, on Collaborate and his trainer, Safi Joseph. All that and more here at DRF.com. We'll see you next week. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.